One of the nice things about that definition of conditional probability is we can solve it for the intersection. So we would get the probability of E intersected with F equals P of F times P of E given F. Or if I were to switch things around, I'd get P of E intersected with F is P of E times P of F given E. These two rules are called the product rule, and they're going to be really helpful as we try and solve some of these problems graphically. Where we're going to really use it is when we're doing things in sequence, like we're drawing out cards out of a deck, or a sequence of flips of the coins, or uh, the birth order of people in a family. All of these things, when you have a sequence of one thing leading to another, that's where this product rule will come into play. Find the probability of drawing two hearts in a row from a standard deck. I want to know the probability that the first card is a heart and the second card is a heart. So first card is a heart intersected with second card is a heart. Using my product rule, that means the probability that the second is a heart, given that the first is a heart, times the probability that the first was a heart. The probability that the second card was a heart, given that the first was a heart, that's 12 51sts. The probability that the first card would be a heart would be 13 52nds, because there's 13 hearts when you draw the first one out of a total of 52 cards. And if I multiply that out, I get 156 over 2,652. So notice it kind of came in handy to go ahead and use that product rule because it's easy to figure out what each of these two pieces are on the right hand side. What I really like to do though is I like to do these problems graphically using something called a tree diagram. In a tree diagram we break up this into an idea of a sequence of events. I start out from a common starting point, I draw the first card, it's either going to be a heart or it's not going to be a heart, so H complement. Once I get either a heart or not a heart, when I draw the second card, it's going to be a heart, or it's not going to be a heart. And the same thing, if the first card was not a heart, the second card is either going to be a heart, or it's not going to be a heart. So this tree diagram shows me the four things that could possibly happen by looking on the branches here. It could be heart, heart. It could be heart, not heart. It could be not heart, heart. Or it could be not heart, not heart. What I need to do now is label all the probabilities on the branch. The first card could be a heart. Let's see, there's 13 hearts out of a total of 52 cards. So the probability is 13 50 seconds. There are 39 not hearts out of a total of 52, so the probability of not getting a heart on the first card is 39.52nds. Now let me go ahead and label what could happen on the second card. Given that the first card was a heart, so now I know there's 51 cards left, there are 12 hearts, still 39 not hearts, I can label 12 51sts to get a heart on the second card, given that the first one was a heart, and 39 51st, because there's 39 out of 51 remaining cards that are not hearts. If I come down and do the exact same thing down below, see if the, the first card was not a heart, there's 13 hearts left out of 51, so 13 51s of getting a heart on the second card, if the first one was not, and 38 51st, of getting not a heart if the first card was not a heart. So with this labeled, I can find all sorts of different uh, probabilities involving intersections. So what we just found a little while ago was the probability that the first card was a heart and the second card was a heart. We said that was 13 50 seconds times 12 50 first. Those are just the numbers that are on this branch right here. As you move along the branches, you're doing intersection, and all you need to do is multiply the numbers. If I need to know the probability that the first card was not a heart, 
and the second card was a heart, well, that's this branch right here. So I take the 3950 seconds times the 1350 first, do the product, and that gives me the probability that the first card was not a heart and the second card was a heart. And I can do that for any of these branches here. Going ahead and multiplying along the branch means that I'm just finding the intersection of the events that lie along that branch. Now notice that both of these two have the second card being a heart here. So if I want to know what's the probability that the second card is a heart, well those are mutually exclusive events, so I just go ahead and I add up what was along those branches. So this first part right here was the probability that the first card was a heart and the second card was a heart. The second one was the first card was not a heart and the second card was a heart. Those are all the possibilities, so the probability when I add those together ends up being one-fourth. So what's interesting about this is you can work along individual branches to get the intersection, and if you need to figure out all the ways to get heart on the end, you just add up all the individual products along those branches to give you your final result. It makes doing the problem a lot easier because it's totally graphical.